the U.S. Navy warns China could invade Taiwan soon. And the Chinese Communist Party wants the U.S. to be afraid, very afraid. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode has been sponsored by Surfshark, because you should be protecting your identity whenever you go online by using a VPN like Surfshark. So there's been a lot of attention on Taiwan recently, and not because of its delicious pineapples. Okay, some of the attention has been because of the delicious pineapples. But there's more and more concern over whether the Chinese Communist Party will try to take Taiwan by force. That's why the Taiwan Strait, the body of water that separates Taiwan from China, has been called a powder keg that could set off a world war. I know what you're thinking. Yet another light, uplifting China Uncensored episode. And it gets better. Earlier this year, a U.S. admiral warned that China could invade Taiwan in the next six years. That was Admiral Philip Davidson, the commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. He made that assessment back in March, and then retired from the Navy. Good timing. The new commander of the Indo-Pacific Command is also concerned about Taiwan. He says that China's threat to Taiwan is closer to us than most think, and that a Chinese invasion of Taiwan is the biggest threat in the Pacific, and a bigger threat than North Korea or Russia. Look. There's a reason that I started China Uncensored and not North Korea on Juchade, or Russia on Putin. And that reason is, I don't want to get poisoned. Anyway, the point is, it's good news the U.S. military is concerned about the Chinese regime's threat to Taiwan. Now the question is, what are we going to do about it? The answer is, absolutely nothing. We don't want to get involved at all. Because, according to my favorite state-run media, The Global Times, the U.S. will lose a war with China over Taiwan Island. Now, at first glance, this seems like a pretty standard Global Times article. It blames the U.S. and its Taiwan Relations Act for giving birth to Taiwan's renegade secessionists. It calls Congress's support of Taiwan corrupt. And it compares Taiwan's situation to the Confederacy during the American Civil War. Just a reminder that Taiwan is a self-governing country that was never controlled by the People's Republic of China at any point in history. So yeah, totally the same thing as the Confederacy during the American Civil War. But what does the Global Times article say the U.S. should do if it doesn't want to fight over Taiwan? tell Taiwan to accept one country, two systems rule under the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, it worked out so well for Hong Kong. And if that doesn't work, the U.S. president could just rescind the Taiwan Relations Act, which he cannot do because it's a U.S. law and only Congress can change laws. But if Congress gets in the way, then the U.S. president should just order the U.S. government to not get involved in a China-Taiwan conflict. And why would the U.S. do this again? Well, it's because China has a decisive advantage in a fight with the U.S. Casualty tolerance. Meaning that, to get what it wants, the Chinese Communist Party is way more willing to let its own people die than the U.S. is. Here's the kicker, though. The whole point of the article is this sentence. Taiwan's fate poses no existential threat to the U.S. And the U.S. should not fall into the trap of paying for their hubris with American blood. They're saying Taiwan's not important. So it's definitely not worth Americans shedding blood over. So we should encourage them to reunify with an authoritarian regime that they were never part of in the first place. What a great idea. Like I said, it sounds like a standard Global Times article. But it turns out, it wasn't written by a Global Times editor. It was written by a retired Marine Corps infantry officer who now serves as a U.S. civil servant in the Pentagon. Wait, is the Pentagon okay with its employees writing opinion articles in a Chinese propaganda outlet that's been designated a foreign mission by the U.S. government? 
Well, apparently, the author didn't ask for approval before publishing this piece. Which means he could be facing disciplinary action. Now, I don't know why this author chose to write this article for a Chinese propaganda outlet. Maybe he really thinks he's preventing war between China and the US. Regardless, for the Global Times, this is a propaganda jackpot. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. This Global Times article is a perfect example of the Chinese Communist Party's political warfare. As Professor Kerry Gershanik says, political warfare is the Communist Party's plan to win without fighting. Part of political warfare is media warfare. That involves using public opinion as a weapon by propagandizing through various forms of media in order to weaken the adversary's will to fight. Here's an example. This China Daily article warns that Taiwan should abandon its independence stance to avoid war. The Communist Party might call it Taiwan's independence stance. Normal people would call it acknowledging reality. Unlike Chinese state-run media, which has to call Taiwan's presidential elections the Taiwan regional leadership elections, because they can't admit that Taiwan is in fact already independent. But the point is, the Communist Party is using media warfare to intimidate Taiwan. And that's what they're doing to the US, too. Their message is, Taiwan isn't worth fighting for, so we should encourage them to give in to the Chinese Communist Party. What's interesting is that the Communist Party's media warfare messaging is showing up in American media outlets, too. More after the break. Welcome back. Messages from the Communist Party's media warfare are showing up in U.S. media outlets. Like in this article, which calls a war over Taiwan foolish and costly for the U.S. It says the best case scenario is the U.S. will suffer egregious losses in ships, aircraft, and troops. While in a worst-case scenario, American cities are turned into nuclear wastelands, killing millions. And all over an issue that doesn't directly affect our national security. That's bullpucky! Excuse my French. I've talked before on the show about why Taiwan is an important national security issue for the U.S and especially U.S. allies in Asia, including Taiwan's strategic position in the first island chain, and the fact Taiwan manufactures the most advanced semiconductors in the world, and how losing Taiwan would put U.S. security in the Pacific at a huge risk. Oh yeah, plus the moral issue that we shouldn't just hand over a democratic country of 24 million people to an authoritarian regime that's committing genocide. When people talk about appeasing the Chinese Communist Party by letting them take Taiwan, it's like they assume the party is going to stop with Taiwan. No, the party never stops. There are other examples of the party's media warfare messaging popping up in U.S. media. Like this New York Times opinion article that calls President Biden's Taiwan policy reckless because it's increasing the risk of world war. Yeah, that sounds bad, but the article conflates showing more support for Taiwan with trying to establish official diplomatic relations with Taiwan, something the Biden administration is definitely not doing right now. And it assumes the reason we've been able to avoid war over Taiwan for 40 years is because everyone just pretends that Taiwan is not officially a country. That's wrong. The reason we've been able to avoid war for 40 years is because the Chinese Communist Party's military isn't able to invade Taiwan yet. But the message here is that we shouldn't do anything to anger China because that could lead to war. It's straight out of the media warfare playbook. So what's the point of this media warfare messaging? It's not going to intimidate the Pentagon, but it still could have a huge effect. First, it plants the idea in U.S. media that the U.S. shouldn't support Taiwan because that might anger China, which could lead to war. That leads to more and more articles about how the U.S. shouldn't support Taiwan. And that influences U.S. business and political elites to also say the U.S. shouldn't support Taiwan. 
because that might anger China, which could lead to war. That especially works for those elites who have business interests in China, which is all of them. It's like the Chinese Communist Party is winning the war without fighting. And this could affect U.S. policy, too. Support for Taiwan is a popular bipartisan issue among U.S. officials. But most Americans don't know much about Taiwan or why it's important. So this type of media warfare can be used to demoralize average Americans. If you turn Americans against the idea of fighting for Taiwan, then that puts even more pressure on U.S. politicians to stop supporting Taiwan. Look, no one wants to see an actual boots-on-the-ground war with China. But the way to avoid war is not to appease the Chinese Communist Party. We should know by now that appeasement doesn't work. The way to avoid war is deterrence, not letting it get to that point in the first place. And there are many ways the U.S. can deter a war with China over Taiwan, which I can get to in another episode. See? This was uplifting. I'm ending it on a note of hope. And this episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Whenever you go online, you should be using a VPN like Surfshark to protect your identity. Surfshark's VPN encryption helps make sure no one steals your private data. <coughs> Chinese military. And Surfshark also has a great new feature called Surfshark Search. It's like using incognito mode in your browser, but even more incognito. Surfshark Search doesn't collect or store any of your data. And search results won't be connected to your browsing history. That's especially important if you're using a browser like, say, Opera, which is now owned by a Chinese company. And with one Surfshark account, you can connect as many devices as you want. Try it out with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And Surfshark has a special discount for China Uncensored fans. Go to surfshark.com uncensored and use the code uncensored to get our special deal. It lets you save 83% off a two-year plan. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.